Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a review, demo, first impressions, swatches, makeup tutorial on the new Anastasia Subculture Palette. You guys have seen this palette blowing up everywhere and I knew I had to get it because you guys know I love the Modern Renaissance palette like so much. So really quick before jumping into it, I am going to have a giveaway right now. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel and comment down below anything you want. One comment per person and one person will be winning a Subculture Palette so you can try the palette out for yourselves. The giveaway will end on Friday and I'll leave the details in the description box if you are interested in winning a subculture palette. And I will leave a little time frame right here of when the tutorial portion starts if you are here just for the makeup look, but I'm going to start off with kind of reviewing the palette, showing you swatches and comparisons with the other Anastasia palettes. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. probably seen this palette everywhere. It is really, really pretty. When I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so different. Because it's like, it's still really wearable, but you have your pops of color, you have your cool tones, you have your warm tone. It's just a really beautiful palette. The packaging is very similar to the Modern Renaissance, except obviously the color scheme is different and the outside packaging is a teal, whereas the Modern Renaissance was pink. Starting off with swatches, they are actually really pigmented and I was really excited about the palette in general just because I figured that the formula would be consistent to the modern renaissance and swatching it compared to the other palettes I will say that this one is totally different than the modern renaissance for sure like that one is way more warm tone whereas this one is definitely more just colorful but like I said still really wearable a lot of people were also saying that this is similar to the master palette by Mario honestly I don't really see that I mean I can kind of see it but at the same time I feel like when you compare the two the master palette by Mario looks a little bit more of like a neutral wearable palette whereas subculture is definitely more like bam in your face and it's a little bit more vibrant when it comes to the actual color scheme and then swatching them again I do think they're also more vibrant and just more of a like colorful palette in general than the master palette by Mario I will say that I did play with this palette already I tried to create different looks with this two days ago and it was just a fail I I don't know what the issue was it just things weren't blending the way that I wanted the looks were just ashy I just personally was not happy I thought it was just me but I saw a different so many different mixed reviews on this palette and I've gathered my thoughts now that I've used it again and I will say that the formula of this is in my opinion a little bit different than the modern Renaissance these shadows they do blend and I was able obviously to create this look but I will say that the mattes are more powdery in this palette versus the modern Renaissance or versus as any other palette that I've tried from Anastasia I have quite a few of their limited edition palettes I always usually buy them because they're so good I love Anastasia's formula when it comes to shadows I think it's one of the best in my opinions when it comes to high-end eyeshadows it's always creamy buttery really blendable but these they were blendable but they're just super powdery like just dipping your brush in there's just so much excess powder and I've seen other palettes like just on social media that have been really really bad mine wasn't that bad but it was still really really powdery and I've noticed I can kind of see a little dent already in some of my eyeshadows which is a little disappointing just considering obviously I bought this with my own money and it's expensive you know makeup is expensive so to see already some of the shades with a little dent is disappointing because you can definitely tell that there is just so much excess powder in the shadows they're really pigmented and they're creamy but I feel like almost they're a little bit too creamy that they are just almost crumbling when you're dipping your brush in and applying and blending and all that so that's a little disappointing Another thing that is pretty disappointing about the palette is that the shimmers aren't as vibrant as I expected them to be. I mean, I see these beautiful looks on Instagram and the shades just look like so, so intense. But then when I went to play with them, they really weren't all that. Like, they were like a sheen more so than like a metallic shimmer pigment eyeshadow. The color Electric, which is the one that I have right in the inner part of my crease, which is the lime green shade, is the most pigmented metallic color that they do have have in here. The shade Cube and Adorn in the palette really weren't all that pigmented to be honest. Like they even spraying my brush with a setting spray and then applying it, it still was barely anything there. Like when I saw this palette I thought it was going to be like bam in your face, super super intense since it was a 
colorful pop of color palette, but I really didn't get that out of the shimmers. So that was very disappointing. The mattes blend really beautifully, but again, they're super powdery and if fallout and kickback and all that bothers you, I do not recommend this palette. But if it doesn't bother you, then I would go for it because I do think the shadows blend really well, but the shimmers aren't my favorite. The mattes do blend really well, but again, they're super powdery. The most powdery eyeshadow in this palette, I would say, is Roxy and Electric. They're both just extremely, extremely powdery. Like dipping your brush in here, you can see all the powder literally is just falling and then Electric is such a crumbly eyeshadow. It's really creamy and buttery, but when you dip your brush and when you're spraying, it just begins to crumble. Very disappointing. I feel like I have to really dig my brush into the shimmers to even get color payoff, but again, that was just me. I don't know if maybe there was like a bad batch that came out with these palettes. I'm not really sure because I've seen some people create really pretty looks with them and they just look so vibrant and beautiful and intense, but with me, I will say that the palette didn't exceed my expectations, which is disappointing because I love Anastasia. I'm obviously still going to continue to use the palette, play around with it, maybe my opinions will change. I'm going to use different primers and just play around because I didn't use every single shadow, like, you know, playing with it. Um, I did use the majority of them, and like I said, when I did at first use them, I wasn't super impressed. I just felt like things weren't blending the way that the Modern Renaissance palette was blending. The shimmers in the Modern Renaissance palette are so intense and buttery, you don't even need to spray your brush with a setting spray when applying them to your lid. But these, on the other hand, when I was even spraying my brush, they weren't as intense and like beaming on the eyelids as I imagined. So that is my first impression on the palette. I'm gonna continue to use it and I'll keep you guys posted on my official thoughts in upcoming videos. I'll do more looks and I'll let you guys know what I think. But as of now, on a scale of one to 10, I give this palette probably like a six and a half, seven. They're so powdery, the shimmers aren't really pigmented and I feel like I'm already gonna be hitting pan on some of the shades. So for the price, I mean, is it really worth it? Probably not. If you're looking into getting a palette, go with the Modern Renaissance versus this because that one is like my baby. This one, I don't know. They said it was a sister, but I'm thinking it might be like an evil twin. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini review. Let me know your opinions and thoughts down below, and let's just go ahead and jump into the makeup tutorial. Okay, so I went ahead and did my brows, so I probably look a little funny. I used the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Medium Brown to outline my brows, and then I used the pomade in the shade Medium Brown to fill the rest of them in. And then I went ahead also and carved out my brows with the concealer in the shade 1.5, and then with the extra concealer, that I had on the back of my hand, I just applied it all over my lids as my primer. I've been using this lately, and it's been working really well with my other eyeshadows, but I don't know what it was. Two days ago when I tried filming this video, I tweeted about it. I just was not having luck with this palette. I tried to do three different looks, and it just did not work. I don't know what it was, but every time I went to go blend out the shades, everything just became really ashy and just not cute. The shimmers were not pigmented for me, even like spraying them with a setting spray. And I was like, oh, what is going on? I was like, maybe it's just me because Anastasia eyeshadows are amazing. So I ended up just canceling that whole video. I deleted all the footage that I did that day and I, because I hated it. It was so bad. And I cleaned my makeup brushes. So now we're here today. Hopefully fourth time is a charm with this video because I want to love the palette. I don't want to hate it, even though I've seen a lot of mixed reviews about the palette. Hopefully, like I said, fourth time is a charm. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are jumping into the first shade, which is New Wave. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply that right into my crease using a Sigma E40 blending brush. I will say also, because I did play with this shade about two days ago, it looks really like light in the pan and then actually applying it to your lids, the color is definitely way darker. I will say, I don't know why, I feel like this palette is a little bit more powdery than my Anastasia Modern Renaissance. I'm not really sure what the deal with that is. That's my favorite palette, you guys, like my all-time favorite palette. But this one definitely is pretty powdery. Like just digging your brush in here, you can see you do get some fallout, so I don't know. But it is pigmented though. So I'm just gonna build this shade up because I really wanna have a warm crease. As you can see, the shade New Wave is definitely more of like a lighter color in the pan. But then when you apply it, it's like, I feel like two shades darker, like it looks a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. You can see once you build it up how like 
dark, the oranges. I was a little surprised because it doesn't really look, in my opinion, the way that it looks in the pan. I'm going in with my Morphe M433 brush and I'm going to be taking the shade Untamed, which is more of like a emerald greenish color and I'm going to start applying that on the outer part of the crease. The matte shades I feel like definitely blend really well. I love Anastasia's matte colors but there is a little bit more fallout than expected in this palette. Taking a little washcloth, I use these like just for my makeup to wipe off brushes and stuff. I love them. I just got them at the drugstore. I'm just going to take my brush and just swipe off that product. And I'm going to pick up the shade Access, which is more of a turquoise emerald color. I'm going to also apply that right on the outer part of my eye. Basically where I just applied that same shade, I'm just kind of deepening it up a little, deepening it up a little bit. I can't even talk. Please excuse these nails. It's been like three weeks. I need to get them done, like yesterday. I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Roxy in the palette. I've seen a lot of people having issues with this color, saying there's just a ton of excess fallout. Dipping my brush in here, I do notice that if you dip your brush in a lot, so I will show you. Do you see that? This is definitely one of the most powdery eyeshadows in the palette. It's crazy though because I've actually seen somebody in a video hit pan on that shadow. That's how powdery it is. So that's kind of disappointing just because I've never had this issue with my Modern Renaissance palette. So I'm going to just take that shade on a smaller brush. This is the E17 by Morphe. I'm just going to basically run that on my upper crease a little bit just to help blend out the other shades and just to kind of warm in. Why do I always say that? Warm in. Warm up the crease. Warming is not a word, girl. Get it together. The color is pigmented. It's showing up, but just like I said, keep in mind, it's very, very powdery. This eye looks better than this eye. Always happens. Now for the shimmers. Like I said, I was having issues with the shimmers when I was playing with this palette at first, like two days ago. So I'm really hoping cross our fingers that it's going to be good today. I'm going to be using a flat shader brush that I got with my Naked palette and it's just from Urban Decay. I'm going to pick up the shade Electric which is a really beautiful lime duochrome green. It's so pretty and I'm just going to show you without any spray how it applies on my lid. I'm using packing motions because I find that that's how shimmers work best. It's honestly though not as vibrant as what I expected and that happens with a lot of my shimmers so I'm gonna just dip back into the eyeshadow and I am dipping a lot because I feel like you kind of just have to dig in a little bit and I'm gonna use my NYX first base primer spray and now it's definitely more pigmented but it takes a little work and I definitely recommend using a brush like this very flat almost like a concealer brush because I noticed if you use just a regular natural hair brush the pigment does not show up very well at all so I'm definitely having way better luck today than I did when I first used this palette you guys I'm telling you the looks that I did they were just not cute like I'm actually embarrassed so I'm glad I deleted that footage I've seen some people's looks and I feel like the colors like the shimmers look so vibrant and then like on me they're showing up but they're really not as metallic and like beaming as I thought they were going to be also just want to mention with the shimmers when you're dipping your brush there is going to be fallout just like that the eyeshadow starts to like almost crumble a little bit especially when you start dipping your brush and then spraying it you know so just keep that in mind first impression of this palette I definitely like the mattes more than the shimmers so far because the other day I also did try to play with the shade in here adorn and it really wasn't barely showing up so I'm just gonna pop on these lashes today I got these at Walmart they're just the kiss midnight style lashes I'm gonna pop these on finish up my foundation and then we'll be right back Okay, so I finished up my foundation and everything. If you guys are interested, I will leave the products down below in the description box. So, I just wanted to finish up my lower lashes on camera. So, for my waterline, really quick, what I'm going to do is just use this Anastasia Metallic Luster Liner. I've used this before. This one is just in the shade Liquid Gold, and I'm just going to apply that right on my waterline.
For my lower lashes, I really want to play with a couple of the other colors besides the greens in here. So I'm just going to actually start off on the outer corner here and pick up the shade All Star, which is like a really nice cranberry color. I'm just going to apply that right on the outer part. I'm going to take a little bit of edge and apply that the inner part of my eye. It doesn't really like match, like the color scheme doesn't really go, but like I said, I want to play with the other colors and see. This color in the pan, it's like a mustard bright color, but when you actually apply, it's more of a neutral yellow. It's really not like super, super intense and bright. So I'm actually going to just go over top of that with the shade Roxy because that really wasn't that pigmented. I mean, it was pigmented, it was just light. And then what I'm going to do is just pick up the shade Cube, which this color is really interesting because in the pan it looks white, but when you apply it, it has like a pink iridescent undertone to it. I'm going to be using a Morphe E36 brush, and I'm just going to apply that right into the inner tear duct. Again, when you just apply it without any spray or anything, it's really not all that pigmented, which is really shocking to me. I just sprayed a little bit of the NYX spray. Um, I mean, it, it's pretty, it's showing up. Just also gonna pop that right onto my brow bone. The look doesn't really, I pretty much used all the colors, but whatever, there is no rules to makeup. I'm not super impressed with that shade, to be honest. It's not as intense as I personally expected or how it looks when I see it like on Instagram and stuff, so. Sunday. All right guys, so that does complete this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Hopefully it was helpful for some of you guys looking into getting the palette. I will leave all details in the description box if you are interested and I will also leave details about the giveaway which is just super easy to enter but in case you missed it, check down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you in a few days in my next video. Bye.